So we're into 12.6, which is cylinders and quadratic surfaces. So let's start with a cylinder. <coughs> so <clears throat> we're going to redefine cylinder a little bit. It will include the cylinder that you're probably thinking of, but it will also include other things. So a cylinder is going to be a surface generated by moving a line along a curve. Let's just look at what this definition is, and then uh, we'll worry about other things a little bit later. So <clears throat> to visualize this and draw it better, because we're going to be drawing in three dimensions, let's take our curve to lie on the xy plane. So we're going to suppose curve lies on the xy plane. So I'm going to draw a curve in blue. So it's supposed to lie on the xy plane. Starts at a point, ends at a point. And when we want to talk about a surface generated by moving along this curve, our <coughs> lines are going to be parallel to the z-axis to make this easy to draw. This doesn't always have to be true, but I'm just doing this because otherwise drawing in three dimensions is pretty useless. So the lines that go, uh, that the curve's gonna move around, they're gonna be all, those lines are gonna be parallel. They don't have to be parallel to the z-axis, but they do have to be parallel to one another. So I'm gonna draw some lines parallel to the z-axis. That's just going straight up. Try to make them the same length. Um, and what that's going to do is going to create a curve at the top that's exactly the curve at the bottom, just shifted up the length of the line segment. This is what a cylinder is going to be going to be for us. There's probably one type of cylinder you're thinking of. Let's draw that cylinder and see what type of curve we would be thinking about in that case and how it would match up with our definition. So I'm going to draw the unit cylinder wrapping around the, let's get crazy and wrap it around the x-axis. So it'll be kind of coming out of the paper. So we'll draw that down here. So this will be around the x-axis. And this will be the unit. Unit meaning radius of 1. So I'm going to take the easiest curve I can think of that would generate this cylinder, which will be the unit circle centered at the origin, and it's going to be in the YZ plane. So this unit circle, the original curve, is going to be in the YZ plane. Question? So in this, are we rotating around a we are going to draw lines coming out of this curve that will all be parallel. Okay. So I'm going to draw the first line, and I'm going to draw my lines parallel to the x-axis. So I'll just start my first line on the right part of the circle there. So the rightmost point on the circle. 
Now I'm going to do the leftmost point on the circle. Now the top point on the circle. And now the bottom point on the circle. And over here, if I was better at drawing, it would look a little bit nicer. But you should get a copy of the unit circle with a increased x-coordinate. So if I drew this, let's say I drew this length, this probably looks like it's length four or so, these lines I drew, if that's the unit circle, then these would be, have length four. I don't want to draw any more lines coming across because it's going to make the picture look too crowded, too much going on. So again, we had the unit circle right here in the yz plane. Let's write down what equation would that unit circle have in the yz plane? So it'd be y squared plus z squared equals one, or one squared. Now we're supposed to have a curve. That's not a curve, that's an equation. And that equation represents the cylinder with any x-coordinate. So that equation actually is the entire cylinder, not just the part we drew, but infinitely going out of the board and going back into the board because we didn't specify a x-coordinate. So what we're going to do is write down the we're going to we're going to write down the parameterized curve in blue. We're going to pick a starting point, let's be reasonable and pick this as the starting point. That'll be the t equals 0 point. We'll go this orientation, so the usual orientation, and then we'll stop we can decide, I can use zero, I can use one for my ending point, or I can use two pi. Doesn't matter which one you choose. I think we've been using one for the ending value for t, so I'm going to choose one to end it. All right, so I need to write a three-dimensional curve. So we get r of t equals, there'll be an x function of t, y function of t, z function of t, so the easiest one to pick is the x. What is the x coordinate of every point on this curve? The blue, just the blue curve. What's their x coordinate, every point of the blue curve? It should be the same number. They're in the y, z plane, so they're all zero. They're not coming out or going into the board at all. So zero is the x coordinate. Now, I need a y function and a z function of t that create a unit circle. So it's a little bit weird, but the way I drew it, the y axis is working like the usual x axis, and the z axis is working like the usual y axis. So cosine is going to be the y value, and sine is going to be the z value. Just for, I'm starting here, I have regular unit circle, and I'm just parameterizing it at the usual counterclockwise way. The only weird thing is X is not involved. This is a Y and Z uh, unit circle right here. So the Y is going to be cosine. I'm intentionally leaving a big blank there and sine is going to be the Z coordinate. So we're going to try a guess and check here. I'm just going to put T and T in. We're going to change it in a minute. If I put t and t in, we do start when I plug in 0 for t. We got cos 0, sine 0, which if I use this right here, r of 0 will be 0, comma 1, comma 0, the way I parameterized it right now. What would be the t value that I would end on to, get, to do one full rotation? I want it to be 1, but right now, the way I've chosen it would be two pi. That would be one full rotation. What I want to do, instead of go doing the circle in 6.28 seconds or in two pi seconds, I want to go around the entire circle in one second. So let's think about what I need to do here. So when I plug in one for t, I want to be back where I started. So I want to have two pi, the input to be two pi. So I go 2 pi t, 
2 pi t, that'll speed me up 2 pi times as fast. So now when t is 1, these inputs will be 2 pi. So I'll do one lap in per second right now. So I just sped it up about 6.28 times as fast. So now my r of 1 will be the exact same value. I'm just using cos 2 pi and sine 2 pi, which gives me 1, 0. If I was doing something more complicated and the orientation wasn't obvious, I would maybe pick 1 half. Well, 1 half would be bad because I'd be on the right side here, or on the left side no matter what, but I'd pick something like pi, uh, 1 fourth to figure out if I'm going up around or down around. So there's the curve, and I'm going to have these lines are going to be parallel with the x-axis. So that's how we can make the cylinder we're thinking about. I just went down the x-axis. You could do the same thing down the y or up the z-axis. You would just have a slightly different curve you would start with and parameterize it a little bit differently right here. So let's consider the equation y equals x squared. And graph the solution in R3. So one way to write the solution in points, so is there any restriction on z from what I wrote down? So we're supposed to graph in R3, but there's no uh, specified z right here, so z can be any number. So if I choose x, y, just looking at there, has to be the square of what I pick for x. z can be anything, so I'm just going to leave z right there. And this is for any x and z in R. Now what we're going to do is graph this. So how do you graph if you're not sure what your graph should look like? Clueless method. We're not 100% clueless, but we're relatively clueless. If I just gave you graph y equals x squared, what type of shape would we graph? Parabola. parabola. So let's pretend that we don't have a z-axis whatsoever, and let's just graph the super easy parabola. So graph that out, ignore your z-axis. I'm going to label my axes a little bit weird here so it matches up more closely to what the graph's going to look like later. So I intentionally reverse the axes and graph it going down. Because I want it, when I turn it around, I want it to be easy to graph on the left. So I definitely get the origin. So take 30 seconds and figure out a couple, a couple other easy points to graph. Zero, zero is definitely on a graph. You can let x equal one figure out y. Let x equal negative 1, figure out other y coordinate, graph it out. And once you know it's a parabola, if you graph three points, you should be able to draw your parabola off of three points. And I have the vertex here. So because I drew my x-axis upside down, the positives are going out the bottom. It's a little strange, but I want it to match when we bring it into three dimensions. 
All right, so any questions on that graph we just drew right there on the right side? So when I bring that curve into three dimensions, I'm gonna to switch to blue because that's the color I've been drawing our curve, our original curve in R3. So I'm gonna draw that same parabola, but now I'm gonna draw it over here. So I have the origin point, and then we'll go one up the Y axis, Now I'm drawing with some perspective right here, which is why my second two points are not aligned vertically. They're aligned parallel with the x-axis. So are there any questions about, the origin should be pretty clear where that goes, but any questions about those other two points? You could think about the grid. I'll draw a super fast grid. That's basically the grid that I graphed on right there. I'm just copying parallel to the axes right there. You could draw your, go over two, up and down four. So go up and down there, but I don't wanna draw all that grid out right there. It's gonna to be too much drawing. You should be able to graph it off of this. It's gonna look something like that right there. So that's our parabola. That's our y equals x squared. All right, so this curve is the part of the surface when z equals zero. I just picked the easiest z coordinate I could, zero, and then drew the curve. I could have picked z equals 25 if I wanted to, but I didn't think there was any reason to do that. I just picked the easiest z coordinate possible. Now, z can be any number. So what we're gonna do is take this blue curve and shift it, shift the z coordinate up as high as I want to. So I'll just draw, looks like it's pretty easy to draw the z equals four right up here. So I'll just shift it up four. So just take that curve, do your best to shift it up four. I'm not gonna bother being super precise with the points. I'm just going to try to copy the two curves right here. And then we'll connect them with some vertical lines. This is where your drawing can get kind of confusing. So if you have a very light color, to draw this, or if you're an artist, you can use a shading with your pencil or something like that. I'm just gonna go, I don't think highlighter is gonna show up at all here. Nope. So that's supposed to be the vertical part of, those are all the lines that are parallel to our Z axis right there. So this equation is quadratic. So what we just drew is a quadratic surface right there. Quadratic means it's got constant terms, linear terms, and quadratic terms. The surface we drew above originally had quadratics in it, so that's a quadratic surface right there. So we're drawing quadratic surfaces right now. And this one right here actually can't be a quadratic surface because it has too many turns. 
but that's a surface based on maybe a sine curve or something like that. So the last two we drew are quadratic surfaces. Quick question. Yeah. So we have the vertical line test in uh, R2. How would that, does that work at all in like R3 to determine if you see something, if it's not a function or not? So in, there would be no, you could look at the curves themselves to see if they're functions of, of one of the variables, mm -hmm. but I can already see from the way the equation was written, yeah. right there, if you know your x coordinate, you know your y coordinate. Mm -hmm. So that blue curve will be a function of x mm -hmm. as long as z is zero. As soon as you take off the restriction z is zero, you can pick any point on that surface. For example, that point and that point and that point, they'd all have the same x coordinate. So once you're into a surface, you really don't have a function of any one particular variable. Oh, they don't show up well even zoomed in. Okay, we'll copy them down now while you can see them. <laughs> so all I'm doing is just connecting parallel with the z-axis right there. So I'll write down linear surfaces, and this will be the general form of a linear surface. So linear surface has constant and linear terms. All right, now that you see what algebraically a linear surface is, what would you call this geometrically? There's a special name for this type of surface. If you want to think about how we generated it, it would be generated, take a line, and then parallel. Uh, all your cross sections are parallel. What did we draw? plane. So linear surface, also known as a plane. So that's a linear surface. Now we're going to go quadratic surface. So it'll be ax squared plus bx plus cy squared plus cy plus d z squared. Would it be cy squared dy plus? Ah, yes. cy squared plus dy plus e z squared plus e f. Z equals G. All right, so linear surfaces, those are all planes. Quadratic surfaces, there's going to be types that we'll look at. So you could have, let's start with a cylinder. You can have an ellipsoid. So a cylinder is based off a circle. An ellipsoid is based off an oval or an ellipse. So it's a stretched cylinder. Elliptical curve and hyperboloids. So hyperboloids are based off hyperbolas, which look like that. Question? Yeah. Um, does it have to be like a squared cube, cubed one? So if it was cubed, it would be a cubed.
cubic surface. I don't know. We start running out of names quickly. I don't know that there's a standard name for a degree four surface. Hypercube surface or something. Uh, but yeah, we're mostly going to use planes, obviously, and quadratic surfaces. So let's look at some examples. So ellipsoid, we're going to center at the origin. So ellipsoid is going to look like x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared equals 1, or 1 squared. <coughs> And we're going to draw this out. So there are some easy points to graph. Let's think about what happens when y and z are 0. What does x have to equal? So if y is 0, that term disappears. Z is 0, that term disappears. What does x have to equal? Plus or minus A. So we're picking the easiest coordinates to graph. So we get plus or minus A will be your X coordinate. So how far is A? That far. Just make up some distance. Go the same amount both directions. So we're going to A and negative A. Now when X is 0 and Z is 0, what does Y have to equal? So y will be plus or minus b, so that's how far we go to the right and the left. So we're going b to the right, negative b is to the left. And then last up, when x and y are 0, our z is going to be plus or minus c. So I'll just pretend it's even bigger, plus or minus c. All right, so those are six <laughs> points right there. Those, that'll be the topmost, bottommost point, leftmost, rightmost point, and furthest forward and backward, depending on what your perspective is right there. So now we're going to connect them together. And once we have this picture, so there's going to be three, cylinder, three circles I'm going to draw. They're all going to be actually ovals. So let's draw the one on the Let's label all this. We had x coming out, y to the right, z going up. So we have the xy ellipse. So it's going to look like that. Now we're going to have the yz ellipse. This one is actually sort of facing us. And now we'll do the, we did the yx, we'll do the zx. It was definitely confusing. Maybe it was less bad before I drew all these in here. I think it, it looks a little bit better if you actually only use those two. It's a little bit less confusing. So it's up to you how much you want to draw in. I like to draw my spheres, or my, this is an ellipsoid, like this right here. If you draw a really fast version, something like that. All right, so that's an ellipsoid. Now we're going to draw a hyperbolic paraboloid.
So it's going to look real similar. y squared over b squared minus x squared over a squared. We subtracted the x squared term. And this is going to equal z over c. We're going to attempt to draw it in a very similar way where we're going to take one coordinate being 0 at a time and then think about what that looks like. We need to have c be greater than 0. So let's go and pick a z coordinate. Let's choose Actually, I'll just draw this out because it's pretty tricky. So this is our uh, curve when x equals 0. And just going through the origin. Then when y equals 0, so this will be in the, I should label these axes, x, y, z. So when x equals 0, we're in the y, z plane. So if I rewrite the equation, when x equals 0, we have y squared over b squared equals z over c. And we multiply by b squared, we have y squared equals b squared over c times z, which is a parabola in y and z. So that would be a parabola in y and z. That's that green curve we drew right there. And we can do the same. It's going to look really similar when y equals 0. We're going to have negative x squared over a squared equals z over c. x squared equals negative a squared over c times z. So this is a parabola, but it's going to be a sad parabola. And this is in the, y, in the x, z plane. We get a sad parabola. So I'm going to do my best to draw the sad parabola in the y, z plane. And I'm going to draw the back side as dotted. So again, that's on the, no, it's not on the yz plane. When y is 0, that's on the xz plane or the zx plane, the one that's coming out of the board. Now I'm just going to draw some other cross sections without computing them all the way out, but it's basically a shifted parabola we get when uh, so if we fix a z coordinate but it's not necessarily zero, we'll still get parabolas like this. So drawing in three dimensions is pretty tough. So I'm just going to refer you to table 12.1 in your book for all the three dimensional graphs that are shaded and look pretty. So I'll write that down here. You can see these two that we tried to draw plus a bunch of others. So it's table 12.1. These are surface graphs.